Turbo 4.3 is well on the way. Uh, we did have some time to work on it today, so I thought I'd give a little bit of an update of where we were at. <coughs> we were able to get the cam locking plate because uh, anytime you have to use an offset bushing on your cam gear when you're doing your cam degreeing, I always recommend using that little cam plate with the locking tabs. Not that that cam gear would move per se once you torque those three bolts plus put some uh, blue Loctite on them. They're probably not going to move but uh, I like having that little plate over the end of the cam just to be sure that that little degree thing can't move out from vibration or anything weird like that so anyway we got the cam locked got the uh, front timing chain cover on got the rear main of course you everybody knows the one piece rear main seals got them on got the side tie pan on it's one of the goofiest looking pans because it's pretty shallow in the front and then it just has a huge deep sump and then of course that's your dash 10 return line for the turbo but I was sitting in here working on uh, trying to put these head studs in you know following the regular thing regular procedure of running the tap through the holes making sure your threads are clean and not rusty or full of uh, sealant from a previous build but I was having a lot of trouble because basically all you have to do is you put your thread sealer on it because on this uh, block the head bolts go straight through into the coolant passage you know most people know that so you have to put sealer on your head bolts and your head studs because they protrude into the water passages the problem I was having is because all you don't really torque them down you just run them down till they lightly seat um, the way I usually do it is I use a either a small ratchet with a 3 16 allen head on it or a 3 16 allen wrench with the T handle works good but you just put a small amount of thread sealer on there run those studs down in their perspective holes and of course get the lengths in the right spots lightly seat them you know just seat them in the uh, in their threads and you're good to go the problem I ran across which I sure don't remember seeing before on any other builds is this short head bolt right here not these got five this bolt right here has a casting you can see that rust down in the bottom of that hole it doesn't allow the the uh, stud to fully engage and seat the same distance as the other ones like literally it will only go in see if you can see those threads it'll only go into about right here like it's leaving a quarter inch or so of these threads sticking up out of the block which I don't like but I'm kind of tired today <laughs> and I got kind of confused because I had never seen a a dead hole like that before but I, I might try to run my tap down in it a little bit deeper or switch to a bottoming tap because the only one I got right off top of my head was this uh, 7 16 13 non bottoming tap but I might tomorrow when I'm not quite so tired try to run a bottoming tap through that hole and see if I can get a full engagement because it just darn near looks like a like a oh I think they call it a, they don't call it a dead hole the uh, blind hole anytime you have a hole in your block that does not enter a coolant passage or oil or anything like that if it's just a hole in the metal 
they call that a blind hole. I don't know why this block has a blind hole just on that one uh, head bolt hole, but I'm going to try to figure that out probably tomorrow. I'll try to run a better tap through there. I'm about halfway done installing the dampener on it. I couldn't find my good the good wrench I usually use, so I was using that stupid cutoff 12 inch crescent wrench. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's hard to do. That thing doesn't give you enough leverage. So I got this stupid dampener about halfway on. And I decided I was going to take a break and make a video. But anyway, I wanted to give you guys an update. Guys and gals, whoever's watching. The uh, 600 horse 4.3 turbo motor is well on its way. Cam is degreed in at 110.5 intake center line. Uh, we got brand new Comp 850 lifters for it. Uh, I think we're going to wait to order the push rods until we get done, get done setting up the heads and get them all installed, and that way we can check the length more accurately. But I mean, it's for all extent, all extended purposes, the uh, short block is done. I mean, it's assembled and ready to make some power. I just got to figure out what's going on with that crazy head bolt hole when he's putting that dampener on. I wanted to show you some of the work I was doing. I worked on this intake for over a couple hours today. But man, look how beautiful those runners are coming. I mean, if you guys know anything about the Saitai intakes, that's that's nice. That's nice right there. When you start looking down through there and it's just a straight shot. You know I me, mean? my goal when I did this intake was I don't want this intake to be any restriction to the horsepower goal of the customer and I think this this is going to do a dang good job. This one single port these things, the single port, if you've ever noticed, these are Siamese. This one single port right here is always slightly bigger than the Siamese port because it has straighter walls. <clears throat> but that's just the nature of the beast building these V6s. But I stayed inside my scribe line because there is a, uh, when, you're, when you're porting, a lot of people don't realize it, when you gasket match a port to your intake, just like a carpenter when he cuts a, a board and he wants it to be a hair longer, he'll say, leave the line. Cut this, leave the line. Well, anytime you scribe an intake manifold, you always want to try to leave the line of the inside of the intake gasket. That's to ensure that when you port your cylinder head, you'll do the opposite. You're going to cut the line on your on your head so that the opening in the head will be just a hair, maybe a 30 second. Well, let's, let's call it a 30 second up to maybe a 16th of an inch bigger than the uh, opening on your intake. And that's to guarantee that you're going to have a good transition from your intake into your head with no restrictions, no ski jumps, bumps, impede, you know, impeding the flow at all really happy with the way this intake turned out I'm still debating on whether I'm gonna do any polishing on these runners because it is above the fuel here's my caveat because I follow the logic that your airflow above your fuel injector can be you can mirror polish it as far as I'm concerned it's not gonna hurt anything but I found out this person, this Richard, in his 403, he is wanting to run that meth injection. And the meth injection is going to come in from higher up than the injectors, as far as I know. Because it's not a per cylinder injection setup. So, I might leave this at that 80 grit finish. It's actually a, a double cut burr finish 
but which is really close to an 80 grit the way I do it. But I don't know. It would it would help atomize that meth injection in the air and keep you know kind of help with the puddling. So I might just go ahead and clean everything up and leave it at that. That way there's no issues with the meth injection. I've still got, you know, an unrestricted uh, airflow to the head. In my previous videos where I showed you the opposite end of these intake runners, I had talked about pulling down on either side of that little boss, and you can see where I did do that so that I could get more cross-sectional area right at the bump. Just pulling it down. I mean, I'm not going to go crazy because I'm not poking any holes in this thing, but I just, I'm really, really happy with the way this intake's turned out. I didn't make any changes at all to the openings on this side of the intake, although I did straighten some of the uh, runners uh, to give it a little bit more cross-sectional area. It, you know, I'm going to call it height, top to bottom, not left and right, not on the sides. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's right up there with one of the one of the things you have to have and if you want to make good power but anyway I just want to give you guys an update because it's really beyond late it's actually early in the morning for me I just wanted to show you where we were at on this I'm gonna to have to take the cylinder heads into a machine shop because we have changed directions on those valve springs we talked about in a previous video we are not repeat not going to run that single upside down conical valve spring. The reasoning behind this is we have decided to go with the comp dual 924 spring because it, be it basically it became it became an issue with seat pressure because that upside down conical valve spring I showed you in a previous video it only had 118 pounds of pressure at 1.7 at install height. I have a free length or free area on those Vortec heads with the Ferrera valves for a 1.8 installed height. Even squashing that spring down to a 1.7, it was nowhere near the seat pressure I wanted for this hydraulic roller cam. A lot of people don't realize, and this was something that a a reputable engine builder in our area brought up to me you don't want to skimp on springs and seat pressures or open pressures particularly on a turbo or boosted engine reason being for every one pound of boost you introduce to the intake port reduces your spring pressure and its ability to keep the valve shut by two. Okay, just simple math. If you're going to boost this engine 10 pounds, that immediately drops or knocks off 20 pounds of seat pressure on your springs. So once you hit 10 pounds of boost, let's say you start out with a spring that's 130 pounds on the seat, now all of a sudden you've only got a spring that has a working ability of around 110 pounds to try to keep that dang valve shut at RPM. That can be a serious issue because it, you know if anybody's seen like top fuel dragsters or the funny cars where they have a, a backfire through the blower and it blows the, blows the supercharger off the engine and there's a big fireball and all that crap that's what happens on a boosted engine when you get ignition with your intake valve open so please everyone pass the word when you're boosting an engine don't cut corners on your valve springs and don't run like for example comp uh, wanted me to run a 986 or a 987 spring that's not even you know that's borderline enough spring pressure to control a, a powerful engine under 15 to 20 pounds of boost. So I mean just keep in mind that you can get by with it for a little while 
But when you start boosting a, a higher amount, 15, 20, 25, you know, if you start pushing the envelope, you better darn sure make sure you've got enough valve spring to keep that valve shut. Because if that intake valve hangs, when it fires that cylinder, you're going to get a big backfire through the, well, through the turbo in our situation, but through the supercharger or whatever you got on your engine for boost. Well, anyway, we're going to go with the uh, Comp 924 Dual Springs. That's why, or that's what necessitated me. I'm going to have to take in the Vortec heads to a local machine shop, have the guides cut down to a, I think it's .875, and then I'm going to have to have this valve seat area <clears throat> where the valve spring seats on the head opened up to accept that 1.509 diameter dual spring so it is a little bit of a pain in the neck because we had to buy new springs return the Howard springs that we were going to run <coughs> we had to get new retainers of course the new retainers use 10 degree locks instead of 7 degree locks so you see where I'm going with this story it ended up costing a couple hundred bucks but in the in the long haul spending sixty dollars at the machine shop and then another hundred and thirty bucks or whatever on parts is well worth it i mean it's going to end up being a little more than 130 because i think the springs are around 80 or 90 and you got 40 or 50 for those retainers 22 for your locks i mean you get the the gist of it but we should be able to get a good solid 140, I think they're rated 147 pounds on the seat at 1.8 inches. So I'm going to try to get it as darn close to 145, 150, you know, in that range on the seat. And then uh, this thing's going to be ready to make some big time power. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. I'm sorry we're not as fast as some of these, you know, bigger shops, but. We do pay attention to details, and I'm, you know, maybe it's my OCD, I'm sure it is, but everything is done perfect, you know, as perfectly as we can humanly get it done. So, man, just keep, keep watching. I'm really hoping to make some power with this thing soon. Uh, I, you know, again, I appreciate you guys watching. I've, I've noticed I've been getting more subscribers to my channel. You know, if you guys have anything specific you want to hear hear about or see or anything along the engine building lines or head porting, you know, cylinder heads, intake porting, that's what I specialize in. Just give me a note. Send me a note. I'm more than willing to help you guys out. Uh, just keep watching. I'm going to keep trying to get this motor done, and uh, we'll get another update video hopefully in the next couple of days. Thank you.